Amazon is unequivocally the biggest e-commerce marketplace on earth. If you're looking to make money online, then selling products on Amazon is a low investment way to reach millions of new customers without tons of marketing effort. Now, there are two general types of new Amazon sellers. Those who are interested exclusively in making money no matter what they sell, and those who are more interested in building their own brands and selling their own products. Now, I'm not going to talk about the cheap tactics like private labeling or pricing arbitrage, simply because there are already boatloads of videos on that throughout YouTube. Instead, I'll teach you how to leverage the leading e-commerce marketplace on earth to grow your sales while still retaining control over your brand. So if you already have your own product, an e-commerce store, or are thinking about starting your own business, then this video is definitely for you. And by the end of this video, you'll have a clear action plan to grow a profitable and sustainable business with Amazon. We put out videos every single week aimed at helping you start, run, and grow your business. So be sure to hit that bell so you'll be notified the moment new content comes out on Learn with Shopify. First of all, make sure you can afford to sell on Amazon. In other words, do you have the profit margins to support all of the fees? See, one key first-time entrepreneur mistake is in fact underpricing. But let me explain. First-time entrepreneurs often set a profitable price that only takes into account a direct-to-consumer model. Meaning they have added up all of the costs involved in bringing their product to market and then set a profit margin on top that really only remains profitable if they sell directly to their customers from their website. The problem with this, however, is that if we ever want to scale our business to where we are wholesaling to third-party retailers, the fact that Amazon charges on average a 15% referral fee for every item sold, with some categories going as high as 45%, we need to make sure in no uncertain terms that selling on Amazon will be worth it for our business. Me personally, I always price anything I sell at four times my own cost so that I build in the potential for future wholesale opportunities. Ensure that your pricing, even on your own e-commerce website, supports the extra costs associated with selling on Amazon. And I'll just toss up a screenshot of just their referral fees by category so you can pause the video and see how much your product's fees are to Amazon. And these are just the main referral fees you pay for each item you sell. Beyond that, there may be closing fees for each item if you sell books, music, or games, FBA fees if you decide to take advantage of Amazon's greatest offering, same-day prime shipping, and even inventory fees, long-term storage fees, and return fees. If you want a detailed breakdown of fees, just Google Amazon seller fees along with your country, and you'll get a clear list of all applicable fees to you, since every country that Amazon operates in has slightly different fee schedules. Step two is to decide which parts of your product lineup you want to sell on Amazon. One important note is that not everyone can sell everything right away on Amazon. Jewelry businesses, for example, happen to be one of the categories that require you to apply for approval to be able to sell on Amazon. So what does that mean when you're just starting out? Well, right off the bat, if you're a jewelry designer or sell any product that sits in any of these categories on screen right now, you'll of course want to begin the application process right away. But maybe you also sell some t-shirt designs and home decor pieces on your own e-commerce site that sit in categories that do not require approval from Amazon. If that's the case, you can start selling those right away and also maybe feature some of your jewelry pieces, decorating some of your product images for your t-shirt listings that just might compel your Amazon customers to want to visit your brand's own e-commerce website to learn more. Step three is to research competitors in your products categories. Check out their pricing. Look at the number and quality of their reviews. From this research, determine how you'll position your brand against the competition. Are you luxury? Are you budget? Are you environmentally conscious? Are you advocates for busy parents? How will you specifically represent your products against the competition while still staying true to the brand that you've created? Again, with nearly 10 million sellers worldwide on Amazon, competition is fierce. So really lean into your strengths and the things that are unique to you and your brand and have clear positioning in your messaging, both visual and written. This is your opportunity to really stand out. Now that you're crystal clear on how you'll be positioning your products against the competition, it's time to sign up, set up, and start selling. Step four is to choose a seller plan and create your Amazon seller account. There are two plans, an individual plan and a professional plan. The individual plan is the bare bones plans with limited features, but it's completely free to start. You're just charged an extra $1 fee for each and every item that you sell. 
Depending on where you're based out of, the professional plan pricing varies from country to country. But in the USA, it costs $40 a month. The math's real simple here. From a straight financial perspective, if you sell less than 40 items per month, the individual plan makes sense for you. If you sell more than 40 items a month, the professional plan is the way to go. In general, I personally recommend going with the individual seller plan when you just first start out. The moment you sell 40 items in one month, you can upgrade to the professional plan at any time. There are several additional features in the professional plan, including detailed inventory and order management reports, the ability to use promotions, gift services, and other listing features, as well as the ability to customize shipping rates, just to name a few. But candidly, if you're brand new to selling online, you may not even understand these features enough to leverage them right away. But if you're confident you'll sell more than 40 items your first month, then of course, immediately go with the professional plan to save on the $1 fee per item sold charged to individual plan sellers. Whichever plan you decide to start on, you'll have to create your seller account on Seller Central. The process is very straightforward, but before signing up, just make sure you have a few key pieces of information handy, including your bank account details, a valid credit card, a government issued ID, and your tax identification and information. And remember how we talked about some restricted categories? It's during this sign up process where you can and should start requesting approval to be able to sell in these categories if your products happen to be in those few buckets. By the way, if you prefer a go at your own pace, follow along guide for signing up as a new seller on Amazon, there is an incredibly detailed article on the Shopify blog that'll help dive deeper into the details. I'll link that article right up here and in the description below. But continuing right along, after you've chosen either the individual plan or the professional plan and you've signed up for an account, step five is to navigate through Amazon Seller Central to get a feel for the interface, but more critically is to determine how you'll want to process fulfillment for your products. The fulfillment decision is really about who is going to be responsible for shipping your products to the Amazon customers who buy them. And there are just two options, FBM and FBA. FBM stands for Fulfilled by Merchant, and that's you. Basically, when an Amazon customer buys your product, you are responsible for packing it into a box, making the shipping label, dropping it off at the post office, and sending the tracking number to the customer. FBA stands for Fulfilled by Amazon, and how this works is you start by paying for bulk shipping of a bunch of your inventory to the warehouse Amazon instructs you to ship to. From there, when an Amazon customer orders your product, Amazon does all of the rest. In my personal opinion, FBA is the only option to choose if your business is the kind where you sell products that can be manufactured at large scale. What I mean is if you are a bespoke jewelry designer who makes pieces by hand or are a clothing store that only does limited edition runs, then FBA may not be the right fit. In that case, you can go with FBM and self ship your items to the Amazon customers who order your products. But if you have found a manufacturer who will take your design and make a few hundred for you at a time, then shipping them all to Amazon just makes sense. You never have to pack a box, you never have to create individual shipping labels, and most of all, imagine how much time you'll save by not having to drive to the post office every single time an order is made. But the unequivocal biggest benefit of going with FBA is that your products can carry that prime badge. You see, consumers, especially the hundreds of millions of paying Amazon Prime members worldwide, have simply come to expect the tremendous convenience and speed of Amazon Prime's ridiculously fast shipping. By choosing FBA, you drastically increase the chances of Amazon Prime members buying your product because that badge adds a layer of trust and confidence in knowing that they'll get your product quickly and reliably. What's more, if you have a manufacturing partner that makes your products for you, even if it's overseas, you can set it up so that they ship your products directly to Amazon's designated warehouses, which simply means that you never have to actually touch your inventory. They go from the manufacturer to Amazon to the buyer without you needing to lift a single finger. FBA, of course, comes at a cost though. Depending on your product size, weight, and category, the cost to you to ship through Prime can vary, but in general, for a standard size package, the additional cost to you typically sits between $3 and $5. This is yet another potential fee you'll want to factor in all the way back in step one, ensuring your pricing has the profit margins to support all of the additional fees that come with selling on Amazon with FBA. But in my opinion, if you're going to sell on Amazon, going with FBA is a no-brainer. 
Oh, and I forgot to mention, aside from Amazon handling all of the fulfillment, they even handle returns, refunds, and customer service. After all, people who buy your products from Amazon are technically Amazon's customers before they're yours. Regardless of whether you choose FBM or FBA, once you've made your choice, you're now ready to start selling, and more specifically, to create your product listings. This is one of the most important parts of your Amazon selling journey, and it's worth spending a lot of time to carefully craft the three key elements, your product's title, its images, and its bullet points and description. Your title is the most important element because it's the largest text the customer sees and can be the make or break between them clicking into the detail listing page or skipping right past. But even more importantly, because every word in the title is searchable, and no doubt is critical for SEO for your product to appear in relevant search results based on what Amazon customers type into the search bar when they're shopping. There is a 200 character limit, but Amazon Seller Central recommends that you aim to have a title between 60 and 80 characters. Let's take a look at this listing title by Homesick Candles. Homesick Scented Candle, Hawaii. Scents of pineapple, coconut, 13.75 ounces. It has the brand name, it has the common logical customer primary search term of scented candle. It has the product's model name of Hawaii and has clear descriptors of what the buyer can expect. Pineapple, coconut, as well as the size of the product at 13.75 ounces. Next, onto the candle's listing images. They are following Amazon's rules for the lead image being on a plain white background with the product occupying at least 85% of the frame. But beyond that, the additional images are all supporting the sale. The second image shows the product on a bedside table, really allowing the shopper to imagine it being used in their own home. The third image is a stylized product shot with text overlaid to drive home a few key features, including 60 to 80 hour of burn time, hand poured in the USA, and natural soy wax blend, further sharing features that are important to candle shoppers. The following images even share a few of their other scents, which lets shoppers know there are other flavors. This piques interest to potentially lead to additional sales and searches. Strive to have at least five quality images and really feature your product, not just alone, but like Homesick Candles did, to have the photos really enable a shopper to visualize themselves using and enjoying your product. Next, we can look at their bullet points. Homesick Candles clearly gave a lot of time and generosity of thought to crafting these bullet points. They're concise, tremendously descriptive, and most importantly, set clear expectations so shoppers know exactly what to expect the experience of owning this candle to be like. How long does it last? What are the primary, secondary, and even tertiary scents that'll permeate their home? Where is it made? How will buyers get the most of the candle with proper, yet easy care and maintenance? The key to effective bullet points are to marry accurate and aspirational experience-based points with clearly set expectations of ownership and use. Lastly, your product description. This is where you can go beyond the title and bullet points and expand on other information that'll be relevant to help shoppers make that buying decision. The key here in the context of this video is that you have your own e-commerce brand, which means you can register your company with Amazon's brand registry to unlock enhanced brand content on your product pages or EBC for short. EBC enables you as a registered brand owner to greatly enhance your product descriptions. So instead of just having space for text, you can break up your description section with images and add comparison tables if you offer a few different variants. This allows shoppers to see at a glance what the differences are. Aside from allowing you to feature your products with greater detail, EBC lets shoppers know you're the brand owner. And this alone builds trust, confidence, and a greater overall brand and product awareness. In other words, if you're selling your own brand's products on Amazon, definitely register your brand as soon as possible to leverage this powerful add-on. Lastly, once you get your first few sales, it's really time to ramp up on optimization. Amazon does have nearly 10 million sellers worldwide, so again, competition is fierce. But the good news is, there is always a way to rise to the top, especially since you're using Amazon to supplement your own e-commerce website and brand. The most important thing to do as a new Amazon seller is to focus your efforts on yielding four and five star reviews and lots of them. If you're an Amazon shopper yourself, you know firsthand that ratings and reviews are the single most important decision-making tool. 
Although it's against Amazon's rules to specifically solicit positive reviews, it's absolutely okay to message people who have ordered your products with customer care messages following up with their order and asking them for a review. To be clear, asking for reviews is okay. Asking specifically for a positive review is not okay. If found out, you can get your Amazon store banned in the blink of an eye. Another great way for you to start building up more five-star reviews is to let your existing e-commerce website's customers know that some of your products are now available on Amazon. This is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, if all of your current website's customers just end up buying your products exclusively on Amazon, your profit margins will go down. But on the other hand, because they already know and love your product, the likelihood of them giving great reviews on Amazon is much higher. Of course, this is the benefit of offering just some of your products on Amazon. So your existing customers will still go back to your website to buy the items that are available only on your website. And speaking of which, are you thinking about creating your own online store? Try Shopify free and explore all the tools that help you find customers, drive sales, and manage your day-to-day. -day. With Shopify, you can use one platform to sell products through your website, social media, and online marketplaces. It takes the guesswork out of the marketing with built-in tools that help you create and analyze digital marketing campaigns. You can even use a single dashboard to manage orders, shipping, and payments anywhere you go. Best of all, you can set up your store in just a few hours. Getting started with e-commerce has never been easier. Click the link in our description below to get started with your free 14-day trial. But to summarize, you want to ensure your profit margins are healthy enough to absorb the added costs associated with selling on Amazon. Next, research existing competitors in your product categories to determine how you will position yourself in the crowded marketplace. Then strategically select which products from your brand you'll want to start selling. From there, select either the individual or professional plan, sign up to be a seller on Amazon, apply for the right to sell in certain categories if your product happens to fall under them, then dedicate time to create the most compelling product listings to show up for the most relevant search terms and stop shoppers dead in their tracks with your imagery and attractively descriptive titles. Finally, it's time to drive traffic and awareness to boost both the quantity and quality of your reviews and ratings. This has been a complete beginner's guide to selling on Amazon. We covered a lot, so if you have any questions on the fine details, be sure to hit us up in the comments down below. We put out videos every single week aimed at helping you start, run, and grow your business. So be sure to hit that bell so you'll be notified the moment new content comes out on Learn with Shopify. Catch you guys in the next one.